Hello beautiful soul. I am Vicki Howie of ChakraBoosters.com, the creator of Chakra Boosters Healing Tattoos. And today I'm coming to you from a small town outside of Enschede, Netherlands. I'm sure I pronounced that with a really bad American accent, so please put up with that if you're a native. <laughs> but uh, it is very, very chilly here, and I hope you can help me put up with the sounds around, especially the wind. It's a bit windy here. I want to continue our exploration into the divine feminine into divine masculine if you haven't seen the video on the divine feminine again men and women have divine feminine and divine masculine I've got my notes here I need a few notes in fact let's put the glasses on <laughs> put the readers on uh, I did take some notes because I wanted to pick three main qualities for each of the masculine chakras now again there is masculine in the feminine in women and there is feminine in men okay so we actually have three chakras masculine three feminine all of us but then socialization and hormones testosterone versus estrogen for example creates a lot of difference in the tendencies okay and that's not always the case because everybody's got different levels of these hormones different levels of socialization and being cultured uh, by family or um, your caregivers so because of that let me just pull up my notes here because of that uh, we're gonna end up finding different you know amounts that this applies but I just want to be clear that men you may relate a little more to the divine masculine and may feel more complete or uh, on track when your divine masculine is healthy but women it's very very important for you too and if you are wanting to be in a relationship keep in mind that having if you're a woman having healthy masculine will actually help you attract a, a healthy partner and men having healthy f divine feminine will allow or help you to attract a really healthy feminine partner so let's look at the three masculine chakras. They are the root, the solar plexus, and the throat, the three odd numbered chakras. <laughs> and uh, so what happens here is we have more contractive energy and we also have an energy that is more interested in the external world, wants to succeed and do things out in the external world versus the feminine energy in the sacral heart and third eye that is more about the inner world and relationships between people which are usually a reflection of our inner world so I think that's interesting okay so the root chakra is the slowest densest chakra it's the red it's related to earth it, it's just very dense very slow which makes it the one who stays the one who commits the one who um, yeah, I could easily come up with more uh, qualities than three. But let's talk about the quality of being committed, of being committed. And this is really closely related actually to patience because when we're committed to something, it actually brings up patience. When, when commitment looks healthy, it means we're able to actually commit to something that matters to us. We're not always running around avoiding it. But when we're over committed, okay, when this chakra, the root chakra is over active for the masculine, because this chakra is masculine, it looks like being stuck. And there's a famous thing where sometimes women will say, well, he's a couch potato. <laughs> that's a masculine, that's a feminine judging a masculine quality. And, um, or he's stuck. And these are both similar things of being in one place and being somewhat stuck in that place. So commitment, when it's overdone, it can be commitment to things that have changed that n are no longer as important it could be commitment to things that have literally become negative or toxic in life so there are times we have to let go of commitments and when we have overactive root we can be over committed which looks like stuckness it looks like um, yeah just staying in something too long and when there's under commitment it looks like 
from a man, it often looks like the player energy, inability to have a partner and a family and a, or to have that and want your side gigs as well too. So the inability to commit is uh, comes from a underactive root. So usually someone who's got a lot of upper chakra energies and usually the story is I'm freer if I don't commit. But what I want to say about that is that when we commit, just like when a tree grows roots, we commit. Our roots go down, they create more base in the ground, more roots, and then we can grow up higher and taller. So there's actually authentic freedom is an expression of deeper commitment. But there is this belief, especially in our freedom-oriented Western culture, that commitment, more commitment leads to less freedom. So people that are freedom lovers, especially Especially those who have a lot of upper chakra energy will have a tendency to avoid commitment but I'm inviting you to look at that again and to see the healthy divine masculine that says when it finds when the divine masculine finds what it wants it has a certain level of pride and almost ownership in committing to that thing that person that place that job that family whatever it is so that's quality number one okay commitment Quality number two is safety and a protectiveness. Now this is different than in the solar plexus where you fight. The warrior is in the solar plexus. In the root, it's not as much the fighting, it's more the guarding. Can you feel the difference? The protecting. This is the father who locks all the doors and makes sure the family has a safe place to be. This is the man who walks on the, and again, women, this energy still applies to us, but I'm showing the archetypal. This would be the man walking on the busy side of the street near the cars to protect, say, his daughter, or his woman, his wife, someone that he wants to protect um, and keep her safe. So this energy is part of the root. And when this energy is overactive, when it's healthy, it just looks like a man that makes a woman or makes other men, other people feel safe. It looks like a really wonderful um just a safe guy, Make it, he makes you feel safe. Now, women, you have that same quality. So if you have a really good contact with this, you can make people feel safe as well. But obviously, the male form and the testosterone that goes with the male form makes safety a little better. It's a stronger, there's more tendency for muscles in the male form. So it's just made for this. But if it's overactive, it looks paranoid. It gets paranoid. Uh, about whether someone will break in, whether there's not enough safety in the world, whether, you know, a hundred locks on the door, okay? So over this getting unhealthy and toxic is where literally the mother or the father who has too much of this energy will make the child actually more scared of the world because rather than just having a healthy level of I've got your back and you're safe, this parent will push the child to the point of you're always unsafe, you're always unsafe. Can you feel that? So that's the over. The under is a carelessness and a lack of dependability. Woo, we got a little sun on that one. <laughs> the under is the lack of being safety conscious. There's actually a danger here. This parent, let's say, because that's a good place to look at it, this woman or man will look like they'll just be irresponsible. And if you have more upper chakra energy, it can be very hard sometimes to even really value the safety that can be necessary in this physical world. So that's the over and the under and the healthy for number two. Number three is financial stability. Any kind of stability, really, having a home, any of that is part of this root chakra masculine. And it is very, very important, right? We all need safety and stability. It's like the first basic need for humans. And when this is good, there will be, it's not how much money, because I've seen people who have millions and then they spend more than millions, which is financially unstable, financially instable unstable <laughs> it's financial instability and so someone can make millions and still be financially unstable so I'm not talking about how much is made here financial stability when healthy when the masculine is very healthy it's about being very aware of what's coming in and what's going out 
there's a balance and a, a cleanness in it and there's more coming in there's always a little more coming in allowing you to save for the future allowing you to have a nest egg allowing you to not stress or worry about money and so there's this understanding that there needs to be a certain amount saved and that money needs guardianship can you feel that masculine energy when that is over you get money obsession you get the masculine energy that will like not have integrity sometimes to try to get more money or you have the masculine energy that will work as a workaholic to make sure that all that money is coming in and yet maybe it's being spent maybe they're not watching that part enough but it can look like an over obsession with money versus just wanting to be financially stable and having more uh, come in than goes out when this is under when the root is under active and the financial stability is being looked at it will often be something that isn't given enough importance the same way the safety wasn't given enough importance so windy here guys <laughs> um, and what that will do is create uh, just financial the bills won't be paid you'll see a lot of when they're when they're, when a man or woman is under in this area which can often be if they're very upper chakra they might move a lot they ha might have people that are trying to get them to pay their debts they may um, not hold jobs for very long you can see how these kind of all relate to each other right it's either a commitment and a stability or not and when it's not it's usually a desire to have freedom or in uh, when someone is under root under active there's a tendency to just you know I don't care so number three again is financial stability the overactive is money obsession the underactive is not caring enough about how financial stability can make one and one's family feel better feel safer so that's the root chakra those are our first three qualities the next chakra is the solar plexus. This is the next masculine chakra on our way up. It's the middle masculine chakra and it is very focused outward. It is fiery. The element is fire. It's got courage. It's the warrior versus the root chakra is just the guardian, like still and strong, right? Like the guardian of the wall. And the solar plexus is actually the warrior, the fighter, the one if need be will go out and make it happen. This is where action is taken. This is where focus is, direction, decisive decision making, just able to make it quick. This is leadership. And most of all, this is courage and bravery. So let's look at three of the qualities here. One of the first qualities here is there can be um, a healthy uh, ability to set goals. Okay, to set goals and to meet those goals or to go after those goals. This is where the goals aren't frightening, they aren't overwhelming, they aren't overdone, like everything's a goal. It's just a nice, healthy balance. If someone is overly in their third chakra, they may be so goal focused that the way the person in the root was so focused on financial stability, they've got obsessed with money. A person could get obsessed with their goals and never be able to live in the moment. This is the future chakra, the one that likes to have goals and go after them. And the weakness here, when it's overdone, can be an inability to relax and enjoy life in the moment. And there needs to be a moment when we enjoy the arrival of the goals, correct? You can't just go <laughs> constantly after the goals, get one, set a new one, set a new one, set a new one, without letting there be some breath without really enjoying the fact. I hope the wind's not too loud, you guys. So the overactive, so this is our fourth quality, right? The goal, um, the goal setting. The overactive with the goal setting is that you get lost in only goals. You lose the moment and you're always setting one goal after another so you can't be in the moment. The underactive is you're afraid to actually go for your dreams. You're afraid to set goals. You're afraid to even make decision to even make a goal. And this is usually a fear of like it needs to be perfect. And I just want to remind you that it doesn't. <laughs> Life is an ongoing process. This weather today certainly isn't perfect that I'm still shooting this video. 
It's about doing it and then you course correct. Make a decision, course correct. I tell this to people all the time. If you want to boost your solar plexus, make a decision. It's not about making the right decision because there's no such thing. You go with what feels right, quote unquote, what feels good at this moment, and then you course correct later, you course correct. Number two for the solar plexus, which is now number five for the divine masculine, is confidence, right? There's a confidence here. This is the fire. This is where you value your unique being. And I'm not talking about just your soul. I'm talking about the personality and body you came into in this life that will never be embodied again. So you're honoring your being in a healthy way. You can accept praise. You're not in need of it because you're already honoring your own value, but you can accept it graciously. Over, I'm sure you know what that looks like. It looks like I'm great and you're not. It looks narcissistic. It looks like I'm the king of the world. <laughs> oh, you guys, did you just see that? I sure hope the stand will stay. Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. Okay. Um, so overly is, uh, is when it just goes crazy narcissist. Under is when there's no confidence, but most of all, there's not even value. You're not valuing the unique being that you are. And that makes me sad <laughs> because we all are so unique and we have a reason for being here and we have a purpose of what we can give to other people in the life that we can live for ourselves in this DNA, in this body, with our lineage, with our story. Yeah, we all have worth. So the under is you're undervaluing and that's kind of sad. That leads into insecurity, which can make you block others out because you can't see their value any better than you can see yours or you just put them above you, which isn't really seeing their heart and their value. It's actually making them an object that's better than you and you can't meet them on a peer level. So whoa, the sun comes out for a moment with confidence. Confidence is quality number five of the divine masculine, a healthy confidence. So the final quality here is in the solar plexus, so it's quality number six in the divine masculine, is courage. And this one is quintessentially important here because this is the warrior energy. So you hear a lot about how we have fight or flight, right? Well, fight and flight or freeze. Freeze or flight are both the fear response, right? But in between there, there's there's a healthy, or even the fight could be a healthy version, which means um, I'm not fighting, um, I don't go out and look for fights, but if it comes to me, I'm in a place where I can bring my courage to that. Now, what I really mean is more about things you'll do in life, like being able to do them. Health, being able to say, I'm scared and I'm doing it anyway. Now, why do you need to say I'm scared? Because that's the healthy truth. If we are frightened, then we need courage to do something. I should say, if we need courage, then we're, we're in fear already. Because something that I don't feel afraid of doesn't require courage, right? Some people think we should have no need for, or we should have no fear when we're courageous. But it's exactly the opposite. Courage entails having fear. Because if you don't have fear, then you don't need to be courageous. You don't need it, right? So that makes sense. So this divine masculine quality is the ability to feel and be aware of your fear and st still take action anyway. That's the healthy version. Unhealthy is um, over um, courageous, over courageous. Now you see this a lot with people who do certain sports that are really take a lot of courage. And many of them actually die in doing their sport. And if that's a masculine way to die. If that's the way they want to go, then that's fine. But if, if you want to live longer, there needs to be more of sort of that middle ground of being aware of your fear and also being aware of doing things over and over and over again, doing them in a way that's very planned, very safe, like the root chakra, right? It's got that routine to it. It's got those safety elements. Uh, there's the movie where Alex, is it 
his last name starts with an H and I can't remember it right now, but he climbs El Capitan and he does it in such a root chakra way. It's like the biggest risk you could take to climb the face of El Capitan without any gear. If you haven't seen it, look up that movie because it's amazing. And he does it with so much planning, as much as you could ever have. So he's bringing courage and he's bringing that root chakra planning, that safety, that security. He's not being foolhardy. And when someone is overly solar plexus beyond root or any other chakras, they will have a tendency to be foolhardy, to be courageous in really stupid ways, okay? And when somebody is under in their courage and that quality of the solar plexus, they'll have a tendency to not do the thing they want to do because they're afraid to do it. And this happens all too often nowadays. And I really just want to say one small step in the direction of your dreams, one small step that's a little scary. You don't have to take on the biggest version of that. Just one small step if you're underactive in that solar plexus energy so that you can really begin to experience that part of your divine masculine. Okay guys, though that's number six. So now we go into the last triad of qualities and they're in the throat. The throat chakra is our highest masculine after it's gone from the root to the solar to the throat. And I just went up because you can't see the whole thing on camera. And the throat is where we hit the first of the upper chakras. So now we're in the divine masculine. We're in the um, spiritual realm. So the highest of the divine masculine, where the integrity comes in. The meaning of the name here is purity. It's blue. It, it's about sound and vibration and frequency. It's about our impeccability. It's about honesty, authenticity, purpose, and being an inspirational communicator about what you really believe in. So let's look at the qualities here. The divine masculine qualities here at the highest masculine are, first of all, honest and authentic. Somebody who's really willing to tell the truth and be themselves, man or woman. This is the courage of the masculine to just be authentically who I am, not trying to be anything else. In fact, trying to become more and more myself. The over of this, when there's too much, is that someone is so much themselves that they're putting it on others, which means they're overly opinionated. They're overly like, well, that's me. <laughs> or they get stuck in that idea of they don't see themselves as a process because the feminine energy sees everything more as a process. We're always changing. They see themselves as a noun, as a thing. I am this way, take it or leave it. So they can be kind of stuck or opinionated or this is me. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? And that then it doesn't have the fluidity that it needs. And if they're under, then they can be a liar or they can really stretch the truth. They'll tell stories. You, they'll literally say they can do things they can't do. They've had background uh, education they haven't had. There's so many different things that you will see happen, but basically it's just they won't tell the truth. Okay, so the eighth divine masculine quality, this is the second one for the throat chakra is, purposeful, having purpose, whether you're a man or a woman, to feel purpose in life and to go after doing and being what I came here to be and do is a very masculine thing. And it comes out of being who we authentically are. So it's a natural outgrowth of being honest and authentic. Can you feel that? Like if you're nothing but yourself, your purpose is literally going to blossom out of you. When it's healthy, it just looks like somebody, a man or a woman who's really doing what they came here to do, really utilizing their talents and their skills really being who they are oh you guys I can see the camera doing this I hope it's okay <laughs> I need a stronger tripod all right so that's what it looks like when it's healthy when it's overly purposeful it 
begins to look righteous, which means somebody is imposing their purpose onto everybody else. Like my purpose needs to, you need to have my purpose too. And it starts to get very zealous, very overly righteous. Can you feel that? And when it's under, it's aimlessness. You can kind of feel it. The person might be someone who has under uh, purpose qualities, uh, uh, it has more of the toxic side of this trait is somebody who might just watch TV all day to just, or drink or do things to take up space because they aren't going after their purpose. So they're looking for other things to fill in the time because they aren't going after their purpose. But it's a very wonderful masculine trait for a man or a woman to go after what you came here to share in the world. The final quality for the Divine Masculine is to be inspirational. Part of the throat is to express and communicate. And great leaders like JFK, MLK, all the ones that had K, <laughs> who were great speakers, could really inspire people with their speeches because this is the communication chakra. So when it's healthy, when this throat chakra is healthy, there is just a natural inspiration that comes when a person speaks from this place. When they are overactive in this uh, quality area or becomes toxic, when they are manipulative and charming about it, they're so inspiring. Think of like a cult leader. A cult leader would be an example of being overly fifth and overly other chakras too, but overly like manipulating with their ability to inspire rather than just inspiring and let people do what they will with that. Underactive here is when there's um, no ability to really communicate. Communicate what you do, communicate who you are, what your purpose is, and there's sort of a lackluster or boring quality. That would be if the throat was underactive, or because you might be telling yourself, what I have to say isn't valuable, it isn't going to be liked, so you create that atmosphere because you hold back. So there's the underactive and the overactive, but the healthy is just speaking about what you love, speaking about your purpose and inspiring others when you do so. So those are the qualities. Let's go at, over them one more time really quick so I can have all of them. And I'm going to do them as nine now, just all nine. The first divine masculine quality is committed right? Commitment, being able to be committed. The second is protective and safety oriented. That's just normal. You're a guardian. The third one is financially stable. Can you feel that you're able to have a little more than it's coming in and you keep a balance in the financial stability in your life and you have a nest egg, right? You have safety backup. The fourth quality is being a goal setter, being able to go after things as a goal setter, which is really about taking action as well. The fifth quality is being confident, understanding your own worth and value that you're here and, and you exist as a unique entity and, and that gives you value in and of itself. The sixth quality is courage. Being able to be the warrior, that solar plexus warrior, and, and go after something even when you're afraid, especially when you're afraid, because that's the only time you actually need courage. Quality number seven is being honest and authentic. Not making up stories, just telling it like it is. Who are you and what are you about? And number eight is being purposeful, a beautiful quality really feeling that you're doing what you came here to do. And finally, nine, being inspiring when you share things, share your dreams, share your purpose, share what you want for the world or for others, if that's part of your path. But just being inspiring, uh, being aware of the way in which you communicate so it is in an inspiring way. So that's it guys. Those are our nine qualities for the Divine Masculine. I hope you saw the nine qualities for the Divine Feminine. Um, what I want you to keep in mind is as you 
do these or look at these and assess these, please be loving and kind to yourself first of all and just know that if any of these areas are underactive or overactive, it's simply because at some point in our life we had to get our needs met is the best way to put it like we were either hurt there was a trauma or we needed needs met so we may have shut down a chakra or we may become came overactive in it and it's really really important that you love yourself through any of it and that you just see it all as a fun little cybernetics something to play with these are just touchstones it's not about right and wrong they're just touchstone things to see if we feel like we're in pa on path and unfolding into our highest and in this case it's our highest divine masculine in the other video it's our highest divine feminine we do both i'll put my notes away here you do both like this you got three masculine chakras three feminine you bring them together and there's just a, a full life there you're living to the fullest of your abilities in both your masculine and your feminine. And that's what I want for you. Thank you for going on this journey with me and I will see you on the next video. Have a blessed week.